How's it going, Reef Keepers? Hope everybody's doing well. So, quickly, for my, you know, regular, you know, day-to-day, week-to-week followers, I know that this is not the most exciting content, me unboxing stuff in my garage <laughs> at my little reef keeping work area, uh, but I plan on unboxing and going through deep review, as deep as I can possibly go as just a, a ran, random guy in reef keeping, uh, on the JCon DMP line. So uh, I've done the DMP 40, I've done the DMP 20, my DMP 30 just arrived, and as you can see, uh, the DMP 30 does about 15,000 liters per hour. So if you want to look up the conversion to gallons per hour, go ahead and do it. I probably should have done it before I started, but <laughs> I did not. Uh, but this falls right between, of course, the 20 and the 40. And then I've got uh, a 10 on the way as well. So we're going to do the 10 next. So I'm going to just keep this organized and have a, like an unboxing and product examination video for every single one of the four iterations of the JCOD DMP line. So let's go ahead and get into the box. This one, uh, I have not actually opened this one yet at all. So um, when you open it, now this paperwork has fallen behind, but inside you've got like a little warranty card that I will not be filling out. Uh, and then your manual that kind of shows you how to get things rolling. Let's take a peek underneath the styrofoam here. On the interior, everything's well packed. Everything's you know firmly in place uh, as the last two units have been. So I've been pretty impressed with that. These come, by the way, uh, the other ones did too. I had just taken it out and set it aside. These come with this, this little adapter piece. Um, I watched uh, an unboxing video recently and the individual mentioned that there it's actually quite easy to get the power cord component in your unique country's, uh, you know, plug style. So, uh, yeah, I don't really trust the adapter and I understand that individuals, uh, <laughs> that individuals drive to not want to, uh, use this because this does feel, I mean, listen to it. It's like a happy meal toy. So I'm going to probably be finding a source and I'll post a link to a source of uh, American um, plug style cordage that will fit the control box um, and allow this unit to function or fit the, uh, um, you know, fit the power accessories. So anyway, this cord for what it's worth is pretty heavy duty. Again, you can use it with this. I'm sure it would be like, okay. Uh, it's just not, it just feels... Again, too happy meal toy for me, for my liking. So I'm definitely going to look for a replacement. I didn't even bother taking this out of the packaging, so you'll have to bear with me while I get it out. Um, the brand on the power accessories is this GVE, and that seems to be pretty common. Um, I have other GVE type componentry, and I haven't had any of it fail. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's designed for products like this that are, you know, budget or alternative products. So trust it if you will, um, or don't trust it if, uh, if you're not interested. But since you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're probably interested. Control box here. So it's got a little, let's take that off. Comes with a little protector on it so that the screen area does not get scratched up. This is a universal JBow controller. Uh, these are coming with all of their Bluetooth capable products now. The cool thing about it that I like, uh, and I actually do, a lot of people, a lot of people get stressed about this um, back plate that it comes with because it doesn't have a screw point where you could screw this into the wall. It just has this little hanger point at the top. I don't mind that. Um, I kind of like let my my power accessories just kind of dangle where they may after I, after I give it a, you know, just a zip into the back of the tank wall, um, or the cabinet wall. And so I'm cool with that. Uh, this is pretty cheap quality, but again, it's like a one size fits all deal. Uh, I'm not ever going to use the controller itself. Uh, I don't, I'm not a controller like guy when it comes to like control boxes for products. Buttons are nice and clicky and everything. Uh, screen is just like a standard black and white, no backlight. 
I use the Bluetooth to connect it to the JBAL Aqua app. I have a whole exploration of the app in a separate video if you want to take a look. A few videos ago, um, I found the app to be quite good. And I actually did uh, successfully reach out to JBAL and have them update random wave mode so that we could control the intensity of it. So with that tweak, I'm like all in on the app, man. All in on the app. I will note, uh, this is a nice difference from the Vortec. You can actually detach your cord from the actual control box. And uh, instead of having the, con the cord pretty much affixed to the control box, I, I understand with uh, Vortex, you can take the control box apart and detach that cord. Nobody's doing that. Um, maybe a few people who are hardcore, but this is a much better system with a little shroud on it. Um, so you can easily detach from that. Uh, other things in the box, we'll get through the boring stuff. Um, these are just your little cord clamps and zip ties. Just the same deal that comes with a uh, Ecotech product, product with a uh, Ecotech Vortex. So, all right, let's take a look at the DMP30 wet side. Actually, so here's, here's my hand with the wet side in it. That actually, um, this feels, and I bet you it's because it's just a touch smaller, it feels a little better quality to me than the DMP-40's wet side. The DMP-40's wet side felt a little weakish in comparison, like the cage, I'll say, felt a little weakish compared to like an MP-40. Um, I'm sure it's fine. Like I, I torqued it pretty good when I was taking it apart to look at it. I think that it's, you know, not a huge factor that it is not like a highly premium cage on the wet side of the DMP-40, but this DMP-30 cage, I guess probably because it's more compact, it feels good and strong. Like I'm, I'm, I really feel like, you know, no like creakiness or flimsiness about it. So you do have to put a good little bit of effort into it to open it up, but it's a little easier to open, I would say, than the Vortex that I used to own. There we go. A little bit of a uh, little bit of jiggling. We'll get it apart for you. So you can see the propeller is basically like the, the propeller component itself is like identical to what you would find. I mean, it, it really might be like the same propeller that you find in a Vortex. They are remarkably similar. Um, do have this uh, high, um, like highly durable specialized plastic. One of my viewers told me what it was. I looked it up. Um, they're using this like super highly durable plastic uh, for the rod that goes down the center point of the uh, of the shaft here, um, or, or just down the center of this propeller portion. You can see, by the way, fair bit of play here. And I think most people are assuming that because there is a fair bit of play, it's cheaper. I was, uh, I, I caught someone uh, with a lot of knowledge about uh, wave makers discussing this play and they actually think it's a benefit to have a little more play than the Vortec does. So I think over time, they, they anticipate actually less wear to the components because there is more play and the tolerances aren't so tight. Um, so that's interesting. We'll have to see how that plays out over time. I mean, I plan to, to run these long term. By the way, you can get, I'm not gonna take it apart all the way, but you can get to the magnet inside of it by popping these little tabs around the outside of the circular portion of this, you know, plate portion of the uh, of the wet side. So let's put this guy back together. Just kind of wiggle it down into place. Just apply a little bit of force and it goes back together. Yeah, pretty nice. Here's the suction cup cap, by the way. So this is the most interesting part of the DMP line is, to me at least, uh, is the suction cup cap. So it is a cast formed, like you can see the suction cups don't just like come away. They are, they have been like poured as one singular part so that the cap and the suction cups are all one thing together. Very strong, but very also like pliable and adjustable. I've found them when I've tested other units on my tank besides this one, uh, to be extremely strong. How they'll hold up in salt water over time, we have yet to see. We're going to find out. Uh, I'm absolutely going to find out and give you guys, like, you know, every few months 
a check-in uh, and like a you know observational report on how these are doing. Um, but in theory, these should keep your pump held in place better than only magnets would. So you've got a magnet that is, in my opinion, in the two units I had before this one, they were as strong as at least um, as the DMP, or I'm sorry, as the MP10 and the MP40. They feel pr plenty strong to me, but you have additionally on these JCOD units, this cap that includes the suction cups. So these shouldn't really be going anywhere unless some tremendous force slams into them. And here's the, here's the piece that everyone waits for. So, I mean, I guess some of you are probably curious about the wet side, but this is my, you know, favorite portion of the Vortec and of this pump. Um, and the most interesting portion to me. So here's how big it is in hand. All right, I wish I had my little tape measure out here. I should have brought it, but uh, I can put measurements in the comments if you want later, if you guys are curious about the form factor of it. A um, little bit of sparkle behind like the Jacquard name, which is interesting, like a little stylistic bit that they put on there. This feels incredibly sturdy in the hand. I mean, incredibly strong. The suction cup cap on the dry side is actually, I'm not going to pull too hard on this, it's adhered. Uh, if you push on it pretty hard, you can get you can get it to peel at the edge, but there's a lot of adhesive underneath of it. So that is fully adhered to the dry side. And I like that because you have to take this one off the wet side to service the wet side. But you don't want this one, like if for some reason there was magnetic failure, you don't want the the actual dry side itself falling out of the cap and just the cap left hanging on your tank, right? So like it is absolutely adhered fully to the dry side, which I think is a good touch for sure. Looks like plenty of cordage here, by the way, I have a lead on some J bow extension cordage. I will post that on my Instagram. Uh, so if you're looking for extension cordage, I think this is six to eight feet, depending on which unit you get. Um, follow me at Kalamazoo Reefer on Instagram, and I will uh, probably in the next few days test and post. The, I, I think I found a solution, and I'll and I'll test it and then post it if it is indeed uh, a viable route for getting like a ten foot long extension cord that uses this this three prong setup. So we'll see if that works out. But uh, yeah, guys, um, dry side's a little bit smaller, of course, than the MP40. I actually like the form factor of it even better. And you're not losing that. I mean, I think that's what for the MP for the DMP40, it's 20,000 liters per hour. So this is 5,000 liters per hour less. And that's not that much less. So considering the smaller form factor, of like the dry side and the the added strength of the smaller form factor the wet side that i'm detecting when i squeeze on these components if you can get away with the 30 i might go with the 30. i think it feels a little bit better than the dmp 40. so um i'm gonna run at least a, a couple of 30s on systems that i've got but uh yeah you know overall um you know i've said in in previous videos for being one third the price of comparable Vortec models. Uh, I think that the DMP line is kind of, you know, <laughs> given that value, yes, you have some budget pieces of it, like not using a ceramic rod, going with a, with a high, high uh, durability plastic rod through the propeller instead of a ceramic rod like Ecotech, things like that, I expect given the budgetary nature of this product um, and the extreme value that you're getting against its you know competition in the American market but uh, for the price I can't really fault anything here this feels like a solid product just like the other two models that I have investigated and I'm gonna put this thing fully through its paces flow test it test the noise on it everything I'm gonna do the same thing for the DMP 10 and then we're gonna start comparing all four of them to one another. So I am deep diving in every conceivable way on this entire line. So follow along if you're interested in seeing, you know, <laughs> at least another month of videos every week of me checking these things out in depth. 
thanks for hanging out guys. Appreciate it. Any questions, post them in the comments and I'll get back to you or reach out uh, via DM on uh, Instagram. I'm around. Have a good one.